So you're looking to get started in affiliate marketing. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to take you through everything that you need to know to get started in affiliate marketing. And we're going to do this step by step as if we were starting a whole new affiliate marketing side project. If you are new here, we have a breakdown of how we created and sold an affiliate marketing website that was basically a side project like what we will be creating today. All in all, we profited about $150,000 from it and we did that in less than two years. We did have a bit of experience prior to starting that side project, but we do think that this kind of success is doable for the average person so long as you are willing to put the work in. In addition to this, we have used the same and similar models to create some nice affiliate marketing income streams that still make a decent amount for us today. So I am only telling you all this to add some credit credibility to this video. As I'm sure you are aware, it can be a little like the wild west out there on YouTube and the wider internet when it comes to anything like this kind of thing. Also, we're not selling anything. We've just started on YouTube and we're looking to create a community of people that want to learn. We still want to learn and we want to grow our businesses. We want to grow as a channel as YouTube is a brand new project for the both of us. And we are looking to do this in the most candid way as possible. We're not about to pan over to a stage desk with thousands of fake dollars strewn all over it in an attempt to try and convince you that we know everything. This is about what we've done before. It's about what has worked for us. It's about what we have learned. And we're sharing it with you to try and build up that community of like-minded creators and entrepreneurs. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. That's a little intro out of the way. So now, on to the main event. This is going to be a long one, so grab yourself a cuppa, get ready to take some notes, and I hope you're ready. Let's get on with it. Chapter 1. What is Affiliate Marketing? So what even is Affiliate Marketing? Simply put, Affiliate Marketing is an advertising model in which companies pay others to advertise their products and services to help generate sales. Payment structure is usually done through commissions, so the affiliate marketer will make a percentage or flat rate per sale that is made. So, as an example, we have a company that is selling something. We then have the marketer, and finally, we have the consumer. Generally, a simple flow will be like this. The consumer will digest a piece of content the marketer has made. They will notice that the marketer is selling something within the content that they have made. This will usually link back to the company's website using a unique link for the marketer. That click on the link will be tracked by software set up by the company. The consumer then buys something on the company's website. Then finally, when the sale goes through, the marketer is rewarded by the company with a commission for sending over a new customer. So a purely hypothetical example would be, Apple want to sell a laptop. You get the affiliate link, a unique link just for you, that you then promote on your website that compares laptops or on your TikTok that discusses how to use MacBooks, or on your Facebook group for Apple fans. Then your audience hopefully clicks on your special link, they go to their Apple website and buy something, and then you receive the special commission when the sale goes through. And that's just an example. I don't think Apple has an affiliate program for their physical products anymore, but that's just about as simple as it gets. Sometimes it can get a bit more complicated than that when the companies are offering different rewards to their affiliate marketers for doing different things. For example, some companies might offer a sign up bonus where all the consumer has to do is sign up and the marketer will make a flat fee, like $2 per sign up something like that. Or there might be a recurring revenue for the marketer. For example, if the company offers a subscription model to their customer, then the referral reward for the marketer might be paid out every month that the customer continues to use their service, which is really nice if you can manage to get one of those. I hope all that makes sense. Have a rewatch if you need to, or have a Google around and check out some of the affiliate programs that some of the companies are offering. You can do this by going to the footer of a company's website and seeing if they have a section for their affiliates. Chapter 2. Why is affiliate marketing so great? 
There are so many great things about affiliate marketing when it's done well. Here are a few that we love. Our first point, it costs very little money and sometimes absolutely nothing to get started. Because of how the flow works that we described before, very little is actually needed by the marketer to make this work. And learning this isn't that difficult. You definitely don't need a thousand dollar course and there is so much information on the internet for free and this video alone will cover a lot of what you need to know. If you go out and take consistent action after taking on board everything that we tell you in this video alone, you will know enough to see some success. So the entire startup costs are minimal or nothing. If you have some kind of platform where people will engage with your content, then that is usually enough. Compared to other ways to make money online, this is probably the easiest to get started with. You don't need to worry about stock or buying your products up front like you would with e-commerce. You don't need to worry about returns or shipping delays like you would with drop shipping and e-commerce. However, if you have some money you're looking to invest in a new business or side project, then you can absolutely put that to good use in affiliate marketing. You can hire writers and designers to create some high quality content for your website or social media. If you don't have the money to put towards it, then all the work comes down to you and you alone. Which brings me nicely onto point 1.5. You will learn so much. If you watch all of this video and really dive deep or do a deep dive into the affiliate marketing world, but your projects don't work out quite as well as you hoped they would, you will probably have developed a new set of skills to help you start a brand new career. For example, you will learn SEO, search engine optimization. You will learn how to write, copywriting. You will learn how to build websites and manage social media. And all of these are in-demand skills that people will pay for. You can easily start freelancing as a social media manager or start a career as a digital marketer. There's a huge range of skills and there's a huge range of possibility to do with those skills. Affiliate marketing is super scalable. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's take the example of a coffee shop. Wonder where that came from. If you were to own a coffee shop, you would be limited to the amount of people you could serve each day. You are limited to the people in the general area. If you wanted to make more money, then you're gonna have to enable the coffee shop to be able to serve more customers each day or create a new coffee shop in the next town. It's very difficult to make this type of business scalable. But with affiliate marketing, a website that costs you $50 to create and $10 a month to run can bring in $500 or $50,000 a month. It doesn't require you to invest heavily in new infrastructure or more staff and advertising. It may take a lot of work to scale it to $50,000, but comparatively, it'll be much, much easier to do so. So point three, another fantastic benefit of affiliate marketing is that once you have everything set up, you have a real genuine shot at passive income. We'll define passive income here as money made that doesn't require a direct transfer of time to make it, such as an hourly job. Instead, you can put the effort up front and down the line. You could be making money with no work at all. This is 100% possible as we have done exactly that. I think that the best example of this is when Joe was first starting out, he was still at uni. He had already built a website and was starting to gain some traction and get some visitors. Then his end of year exams came up and during the exam month, he did exactly zero minutes of work onto the website. He still made over two and a half thousand pounds that month. And that is what we mean by passive income. That is the dream right there. And that is what you can achieve through affiliate marketing. Again, I hope that helps to clarify some of the best parts of affiliate marketing. Even though some people will say it's saturated and as the barrier for entry is so low, it's easy for a lot of people to get started. That does not mean that you should not try. There are a lot of untapped niches out there and a lot of room for multiple sites doing similar jobs. And as it doesn't cost a lot to start and you will learn a lot even if it doesn't work out, then the risk to reward ratio is super low. You may as well give it a go. Tea break. Chapter three, general overview. Okay, so I hope you have an idea of what affiliate marketing is and why we love it so much. But now we'll take you over the general idea of how to do it. Later, we'll go into many more of the specifics of what we did and what will be needed to create a website similar to ours. So for any of this to work, you need some kind of audience. 
If you have that already, then you've completed probably the hardest part. By this, I mean people are coming to your content, so they have the opportunity to click on your links. This can be done in many ways. You might build up an Instagram account about something that you love. Then you would promote products that are relevant and high quality about the thing that you love. Or you might build a TikTok or email list or write on Medium or do anything that would bring in an audience. This is a core concept that needs to be understood. You need an audience, but there are endless ways of creating one. We will be covering a very specific way that has many great benefits, but we'll get to that in a bit. Also, it's worth noting that not all audiences are created equal. If you have an Instagram meme page about cats, you might bring in a large audience, but they are there to be entertained. They probably won't be buying any cat-related products that you are trying to promote. But again, we'll get into a lot more detail about this later. Once you have your audience, then it's time to monetize it. Here you want to find products and an affiliate program or a few that you can sign up and start getting some links. There are always requirements and terms and conditions that you should always thoroughly read before you start posting your links anywhere. But at this point you have an audience and you have a way to monetize it. So now it's just a case of getting your links out there, seeing what works and what doesn't and then refining that process until you are happy. So all in all it's not too difficult at a high level. But let's jump into the more specifics now. For this, we'll look at building an affiliate website. This is a website that's value comes from information. We'll be answering questions, solving problems and more all around a specific niche. Chapter four, what is a content site? So in the last part, we said that the websites that we would create would get the value from the information. But what does that mean exactly? Well, we will be producing content that's very valuable to a specific type of person. That person will be someone that doesn't know what to buy. This could be about absolutely anything. Maybe someone doesn't know what shoes to buy to go hiking. Maybe they are looking for a chainsaw for that pesky overgrown tree. Maybe they are getting into metal detecting and want to find the best metal detector for beginners. A content website will be built to help this type of person answer all of their questions. We'll cover information on their hobby or problem. We'll review the products they might want to buy. We'll compare different products and give our opinion on the best one available. We'll also also build the website around SEO friendly content. SEO stands for search engine optimization and it's basically a technique to get your content on the first page and ideally the top result on Google. This means that all of our audience, all the visitors will come to this site for free. And in all of these pages of content, we will be linking to different websites that we have partnered with where we will earn a commission when somebody buys something. These will be our affiliate links to our affiliate partners. But this won't be us randomly picking something to talk about. We're going to start a process to research a niche that will make us money. Chapter five, niche research and content planning. This is a big one, so stick with it folks. First things first, a niche is a small or specialized segment of a market for a particular kind of product or service. Let me give you an example. We have the very general wider technology market. This is made up of hundreds, if not thousands of different types of products. Within that, we have computers. We could say that computers are niche within the technology market, but that is still a bit big for us. Within the computer market, we could have the gaming computer market. And within that, we could have the gaming laptop market. And within that, we could have the budget gaming laptop market. So now, we're getting there. We could say that our niche is the budget gaming laptops. So we would build our site around answering people's questions and helping people pick the best budget gaming laptop for their needs. So I hope that helps to give you an idea of what we mean by niche. So we've said this before and we'll say it time and time again. The research you do into your niche, into your products, into the affiliate programs and competitions is probably the most important stage for a no budget or low budget affiliate marketer as you won't have the resources to be competing with the bigger websites. But I need to warn you against analysis paralysis. 
This is where you spend too much of your time analysing your options and not picking something and start working on it. It is important to understand that whatever niche you choose, there is no way of knowing if you made the right decision until you start. But just starting is very important. You can spend literally months analysing all the different niches that you can think of and still end up with the one that fails. Don't worry about this too much though. Committing to something will always be a leap of faith you will never know for sure. But if you actually act upon the choice you make, you have more chances of success than those who never act. This will teach you so much that you need to know, especially as a beginner. So then your next one, if your first one doesn't succeed, would be a much easier ride. We did exactly this. The first website we created was around a niche that was a bit too small with too much competition to really get anywhere given our experience. But from this we learn how to research, we learn how to create websites and we learn how to create optimised posts and so much more. The next one we started did really well. It is actually bringing in a few hundred dollars every month even today, four or so years later and after years of not touching it. So what you should take away from this is that you should find the right balance between research and action. Research enough to give you the confidence so you can make it work. But then get to work, start something so you can learn, you can grow and hopefully succeed. Okay, so now let's talk a bit more about how we actually do the research. So what do we look for in a niche? What exactly do we want that would be worth our time? This is where a little sprinkle of psychology gets added to some data analysis. Firstly, we want to be thinking about the people we want in our audience. Going back to the example before, we don't want the people that are just here for entertainment. Chances are, they aren't going to buy anything. Instead, we want a buyer's mindset in our audience. This is the first main criterion. If you actually want to make money from this, your audience is best when they are already looking to buy something. We want people who have a problem they want solving, a problem that usually revolves around what to buy. This is so important as it makes our job so much easier. Making content for people that already want to buy something will make our posts so much more effective. So much so that we actually had a page on one of our sites with a 100% click through rate. This means that every person that visited our site would on average click through to our affiliate partners more than once. This is a huge number and it comes down to the page covering a question that the buyers regularly ask. This just goes to show how important the buyer mindset can be. So we've got a general idea of the type of people we would like to visit our website, but we've got a few more specific requirements for our niche. Firstly, we would like to be promoting expensive products. If our average product is over a hundred dollars, that's a good start. Ideally, we'd like more than that. This is because you're going to be earning around three to ten percent for every sale. Depending on the niche you choose, this could actually be a lot more, but we're going to stay conservative with this and stick to around 3 to 10%. So if you're getting 10% of $20, you're going to need to sell a lot to make it worthwhile. Whereas if you're earning 10% of $2,000, suddenly it's gonna start adding up to considerable amounts very quickly. In addition to this, we need to consider the commission rates. 3 to 10% is pretty standard for physical products, but you can easily find other products and services online that offer much higher percentages. For example, SaaS websites, software, as a service, regularly offer higher percentages, sometimes up to or even over 50%. All of these numbers are very general, but you'll get your own idea when you do your own research. Another quick point to note is that you can totally negotiate with the company you're working with for better rates. This is something that will probably be much further down the line, but it's worth knowing. The next thing we love to see is products with a passionate audience. This should be fairly obvious. People who are passionate about their niche or their hobby will be much more likely to come back to your site and purchase multiple items or purchase items that are considerably more expensive. In the same vein as this, we also like products that are necessary. For example, people need to sleep so you could build your website around bedroom furniture niche. You can do comparison posts on different mattresses, information posts on why some mattresses or bases are better than others, and so on. If we take the bedroom furniture niche, that can quite easily fit into another requirement that we like to have from our niches. We like to have products that are a smaller part of a bigger niche. This allows you to expand easily and scale your site out beyond your niche. For example, if you cover a lot of your content around bedroom furniture, you 
can easily expand into other household furniture or office furniture or even garden furniture. Ideally, all these products would be available on Amazon or another big affiliate program to keep it simple. Or you could do some research in the types of products available. Go onto brands own websites and see if they offer their own affiliate program. We had multiple companies that we worked with that offered their own in-house affiliate program rather than going through a big affiliate network. And finally, is this something that you are passionate about? That will make things so much easier. Having to write thousands of words about something you don't care about or don't know anything about is hard. This definitely is not a strict requirement, but it does make things a bit easier. So how do we actually find these products and niches then? Well, there are a few ways we can do this. The first is simply through your mind. By that we mean you just brainstorm hobbies and things that people need. Generally, the smaller the niche, the better for now. We think it's easier to dominate a smaller niche and grow from there than to dive in head first into a much larger niche. The next method we use is to go onto a big online store like Amazon and simply just browse through their categories. Here you can find the different levels of categories which can provide information and inspiration for finding your niche. So if we have a quick look at mattresses, there isn't a lot that are over $100. Straight away, I'll be thinking of looking elsewhere to see if other places offer their own affiliate programs. Or if they offer more than Amazon do, which at the time of recording, I think is around 5%. But staying on Amazon, we can search through all of these categories. There's so much information here, and the deeper you go, the more niche the categories become. It's not that difficult to put together a list of niches from Amazon alone. For example, let's go to home and kitchen. Here, you can see all of these subcategories that could be perfect as the base for a niche. So now if we jump into one of these subcategories, we can get a feel for the types of products we'll be working with and we can promote. If we go to parties and supplies, I'm immediately thinking that we could have a website around creating amazing parties and events and then recommending the best types of supplies and other party related products. We can even see down the side that there are many types of parties. So maybe we pivot a little and turn the website into a wedding planning site where we cover everything people have to know about planning their wedding party and then recommend things there, especially if people are more likely to spend a lot more at their wedding. Weddings can also expand into bridal showers, gender reveal parties and many similar niches so this could tick a lot of boxes. But you might have noticed something. I'll give you a moment as I scroll through some of the products on offer to see if you see something that isn't in line with what we really require from a niche. Yep, so none of these products are that expensive. It looks like $25 is about the most we can be working with, which is disappointing. This doesn't mean that this isn't worth pursuing. You might love the idea of writing about weddings and find it super easy to write thousands of words, which would be great and might suit you better. So go for it. With hundreds of thousands of words and an established audience, there are so many ways to monetize it from affiliate marketing and beyond. But for us, we really need the products to be more expensive to make the commission worth it. Next, we have a great trick that we love to use. If you go to a site that is in the potential niche that you're interested in, you might be able to add sitemap.xml to the end of the URL and be shown a sitemap of all the pages that they have created. This can give you a very quick overview of lots of different pages that could help you come to a conclusion about the niche you're interested in. For example, in one of our SEMrush tutorial videos, we have used the website chainsawlarry.com as an example. And Chainsaw Larry has a great example of this. This means that there is a sitemap page with all the pages that make up the website for you to easily browse and learn from. Looking at Chainsaw Larry's, we can see so much information that can give you ideas, easy access to competitors, content and more. And lastly, we like to use SEMrush. 
SEMrush is a keyword research and SEO tool that we have used on every website we have created. This helps us to find search terms or keywords that people have put into Google. We then use these terms as a basis of our post for our website. But what SEMrush is really good at is helping us find out more about the niche that we are researching. Using the same techniques we use to search for keywords, we can see how many people are searching for a keyword we might be interested in. For example, if we take mattresses, it looks like there's a lot of competition. But we have a video on how to find the best keywords using SEMrush, which will explain this process in a lot more detail. If, after doing research with SEMrush, we find a handful of really good keywords for related products in our niche, then it could be worth going with it. There are many, many more techniques which we could spend an entire course going through. But we'll name drop a few for you here now so you can look into them if you're interested. Google Trends. This is great for looking at trends of Google searches and keywords. If something is trending up, that is usually a good sign and shows that the interest in a niche is growing and will remain somewhat strong in the future. On the other hand, if it is declining, it might be worthwhile looking elsewhere. Subreddit Stats. This is a site that analyzes Reddit subreddit's growth and general stats. Great for getting an insight into what's trending and might be flying under the radar. Answer the public. This is as good for niche research and validation as it is for helping with individual posts. You put in a keyword and it spits out hundreds of recommendations. They're useful for all parts of the affiliate process. So let's summarize with an example. We'll take the chainsaw example that we used in our sandwich videos and mentioned before. So from our own brainstorming, we thought of chainsaws. It's something that people need, but probably has a dedicated and passionate audience that love to compare different makes and models. Great start. Next, it has many expensive products, many being around $100. Okay, not bad. We'll take it, but could be better. Let's keep going. Chainsaws are obviously part of a bigger niche that we could expand to in the future. This means that we could scale easily and won't run out of content. And then from the SEMrush video, we can see that we have lots of potential keywords with low competition and high volume. This could definitely be a winner and could probably be a decent first website if you're new to this. Now, there's a lot that can go into the research phase and we could definitely go a lot deeper. Once we have a niche that we like the look of that meets the criteria that we mentioned before, We'd like to do a bit more research to help validate the niche and potential content we'd be looking to create. So the next thing we do is to see the competition for some of the keywords that we found. If we find a lot of the keywords have low competition, then that is brilliant. And we are getting closer and closer to confirming our niche. So let's take the keyword best chainsaw as an example. This was found using SEMrush, which gave it a low difficulty rating of 40 out of 100. We find this to be a fairly accurate representation of what you can expect, but it's definitely not as thorough as doing some research yourself. And that's what we'll do now. We use a Chrome extension from a company called Moz. They've built an extension that shows the domain authority, DA, and page authority, PA, of each search result on Google. This is calculated by Moz themselves and gives us a good example of how big the website is. The lower these numbers, especially the DA, the easier it will be to rank for a new website. So if we search for best battery chainsaw with a mods extension active, we can see these extra boxes underneath with the results. Here we can see some interesting data. The first result has a DA of 52. That's quite high. Below that though, we have a result with a DA of 26, that's much more like it. This means the website isn't huge, doesn't have as much authority as the first, and could be one we'd realistically be able to compete with. Scrolling down, we see another big sign, the Spruce, with a DA of 76, and others that would be tough to beat. But overall, we've got some in the 20s and low 30s, this isn't too bad. I probably consider doing this post as we might be able to get into one of the lower positions or even in second if we produce better content and get some backlinks to that post. Ideally, we'd like to see some competition below a DA of 20 as that's fairly easy to beat. But for our example, this is pretty decent. So this keyword would go into a list of the keywords that we'd actually make content on. We'd aim for this to be as long as possible, but ideally 20 to 30 of these keywords are needed to give us a decent amount of content to start with. 
Not only that, but it's also probably worth looking at the smaller companies within the niche. We love to work with smaller companies when we get established. You can make some great relationships with them which can easily lead into great advertising opportunities, review products that you get to keep, custom affiliate rates and even potential giveaways. You can tend to recognise a smaller company's website simply by how it looks. If it's a Shopify website and also using the mods plugin DA rating, if it's lower that's generally better for building relationships with their owners. But for now we'll leave it at that as that should be enough of an introduction into the niche side of things. After all of this you might not have actually been able to find a niche that meets all the requirements that we have set. That's okay. We advise you to always be on the lookout for a new niche and remember the techniques that we have mentioned so that you can jump in and validate a new niche that you might have found. But for now take the one that you like the look of the most and go on to the next section. Actually planning and building your site would be much more valuable than finding that perfect niche, especially at this point. And who knows, you might create brilliant content that is promoted well, that your audience loves, and that makes you a load of money. So for a quick summary, as that was a lot to take in, you need to find a niche that meets all the criteria that we mentioned. This isn't a hard rule, but we found the most success when doing this. The niche needs to be around something where people are buying products. Your audience needs a buyer's mindset. It's also useful to have expensive products as the core of your niche. Even better if your audience are really passionate about your niche. If your niche is part of a bigger niche that you can expand into, then that's ideal. And if you have a passion for the niche, that's even better. You'll need to do some research to validate your niche. This can be done with a series of tools such as SEMrush, Moz and just having a good old peruse around Google. Try to have keywords that has the buyer's intent built in, such as best chainsaws or similar. Use SEMrush and Moz to find these. Find a difficulty and competition and then build up a list of around 20 to 30 keywords that can be used for a base of a post. So okay, so let's say you have actually found your niche it hits all the criteria that we've set and we've got a few nice little extras ready to go. Now what? I need a new coffee and that's what. Chapter 6. Website creation. So now we have a nice niche, we've got some content planned out and we have done loads of research. We're fairly confident that if we execute this well, we should be able to create a fairly successful affiliate site. But now it's actually time to build the website. So first things first, we need a domain name. If you don't know what that is, it's the name of the website, the URL, for example, youtube.com or chainsawlarry.com. Now there are a few things we can do here. Some people recommend certain things over others, but we'll just keep it simple. We don't think you should add keywords into the domain name. So for our chainsaw example, we wouldn't bother putting in best chainsaws into our domain name. We think that this can limit the scope of your site in the future. For example, chainsawlarry.com is limited to chainsaws. Obviously, you can do whatever you want to on your site. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. But we think a shorter, more brandable name for your website and domain name is the way to go. By brandable, we mean something unique, something that sounds good, something that we can build a brand upon. In fact, ChainsawLarry.com kind of is quite brandable and has a keyword in the title. So this is a pretty decent example. But ultimately, don't spend too much time on this. It's not important. In fact, our most successful website's name was pretty bad and it didn't affect anything. Once you have figured out a name, then head over to somewhere where you can buy domain names. We like Namecheap. It's simple, it does the job and it's well priced. You can expect to pay around $10 a year for your domain. The next step is web hosting. All websites need to run on a server that is turned on 24-7 so people can access it at any time. There are companies that manage these servers and host websites for customers. There are so many examples of these businesses and they all do a similar job. We use SiteGround for all our hosting needs and we would highly recommend them. They have nice introductory offers that help keep the price down during your first year, but you can easily scale it up later if you want to. They also have great customer service and have fixed any problems we have had straight away. Vital if you are newer to this kind of thing. We'd recommend simply starting with the cheapest shared hosting plan 
you can find. There are things such as VPS, which is a server to yourself, but don't worry about that for now. We then need a way to make our website. We have used WordPress for every website we have created. WordPress is a content management system. This means you can create and manage all your content, like pages and images on your website very easily. Setting up a WordPress website is a tutorial in itself, so we're not going to go into huge amount of details in this video, but we will tell you what we'd recommend to use. One of the main components of a WordPress website is the theme. This is what makes the website look like what it looks like. We'd recommend a series of themes called Genesis. Theirs are super lightweight which means they're easy to manage, they're easy to edit and are nice and speedy which will help your audience stick around. You can then add some extra functionality to your site through the use of plugins. Here's a quick list of some plugins that we recommend. Yoast SEO. We have spoken about this before and we do think it's the most important plugin on this list. This will help optimize all of your content to make it as SEO friendly as possible. And this will be the way you rank all of your content on Google. It's basically your main promotion tool, so it's very important. Pretty Links. We have spoken about this one before as well. It is a paid plugin, but it will save you a massive headache down the line if things go well. Not needed, but well worth it. W3 Total Cache. This is a caching tool which will help speed up your website. WordFence Security. WordFence is a plugin that helps secure your site. You get a series of tools such as a two-factor authentication to help prevent your site being hacked. Very important, especially if you start becoming popular. Amazon Affiliate WordPress Plugin AAWP. This is another paid plugin we've spoken about before. There are so many features here, all around helping you to integrate Amazon products into your site. In nifty tables and widgets that can help improve conversion rates and make your site better for users. Monster Insights. This is a Google Analytics tool that links your WordPress site to your Google Analytics account. Google Analytics is a visitor tracking and analytics tool that is a must. It will give you all the data you need on your visitors to your site. And we'll go into a bit more detail on tracking your visitors in the next section. For now, that should be a good start. You have the SEO covered. You've got some caching to improve your website speed, secured your site, have a way to track visitors, and even some nice quality of life plugins to help you manage the content. There are so many more plugins out there and I'm sure you're gonna find some for your own needs but we'll leave it at that for today. The next section is tracking and keeping a record of all your website's data. This is super important as it gives you so much information on how your website is performing and it will tell you where you need to focus your time. Tracking and analytics are so important to help you see what's working and what isn't. The very first thing you need to do is install Google Analytics. This will give you all the data you need for the people that make it to your website, their behavior whilst on your site, and how and when they leave your site. In addition to this, we highly recommend setting up Google Search Console. This is another tool from Google that allows you to check page indexing status, search queries, crawling errors, and optimize the visibility of your website. There's also a keyword tracking tool that can be used with SEMrush to help keep an eye on your keywords. What we'd also recommend is to keep a spreadsheet with a series of figures on it to help you interpret some of the data you'll get from what we mentioned before. We use something like this. This tracks everything from the simple amount of visitors to calculating the revenue per session. This is just an example, but it's a similar number wise to the first full year of our first website. And that just about rounds up this section. We could go into way more detail, but a lot of that is out of the scope for this video. But in summary, Grab yourself a domain name from Namecheap, get cheap hosting from SiteGround or similar, use a Genesis theme or similar, then throw in the plugins we've mentioned and you should be good to go. Chapter 7 Content Creation Content is king. What we mean here is the actual posts that you create. This includes the writing, any images, any comparison tables, 
or anything else that you decide to put into your post. Thorough, well-researched and well-presented content will always eventually outperform poor content. But there are a few things that we like to do and would recommend to help you create the best content possible. Starting at the very beginning, you need a good understanding of the English language. It doesn't mean you have to be a writer, but your English needs to be strong. But that being said, if you decide to do a website focused on another language, then the same holds true. Make sure the language you are writing in is strong. This is simply because if your content reads poorly, then no one is going to trust you enough to stick around, let alone click through to any affiliate partners. Next, we have found the most success when we focus on creating long content with lots of pictures, videos, and if you can, custom graphics. The aim is to make your content as engaging as possible so people will actually read what you have to say. It's becoming more and more obvious when a site is a shallow, money-grabbing affiliate site. The content tends to be very basic with a lot of filler. We do not want this. I'm sure you've been on a website where there's around 3,000 words of filler that simply gets in the way of what you're trying to find. Unfortunately, this is the case because that extra 3,000 words has additional keywords that people like to spam. We suggest that you actually answer the question to the title of your post early on, and then if people want to read more, put that towards the end. If you need to add more content to boost the length of your post, then think of the actual question that people would want answering. You can do pros or cons list of the products or comparisons. Anything that actually adds value if the viewer wants a more thorough look at the product. We've mentioned this before but the focus of our posts, especially early on, are review posts. You might be thinking that you actually have to buy and use the product before you can review it, but that's not always entirely the case. If you can, then brilliant, go for it and go and make the most in-depth review on the internet. But how we like to handle the review keyword is to think of it as an information roundup. So you go out and find out as much as you can about the product. Some of all the objective information that you can find, such as specifications, materials, and so on. Then find all the subjective information, such as people's opinions. Then summarize everything that you have found in a post that's around two to 3,000 words long. We think this is actually a better way of doing reviews as you're giving the viewer a general consensus of the product rather than your individual review. In addition to review posts, we like to focus on best of posts. This is where you get five to 10 items around a particular keyword, such as best electric chainsaws, and then compare them. We do the same process as we would with review posts. So aim for a lot of useful content, pointing out the good and the bad parts of each product and then summarizing the best few. We like to point out different unique selling points of each product. So if people are looking for something specific, we've probably got it covered. For example, if we take best electric chainsaws again, then we might do sections on best overall electric chainsaws and the best small electric chainsaw and the best electric chainsaw for money. Not only does this help structure the post better, but it also adds to the possibility of more keywords being added to your post. For this type of post, we aim for around three to 5,000 words as we have found that longer posts do better for us. A couple more quick tips to finish off include breaking down the content into digestible chunks and sections as we've mentioned before. We don't put it into a wall of text, it needs to be digestible for your audience. We also like adding a short summary just after the intro with a link to an affiliate partner. This is so if people are lacking the patience they don't need to scroll all the way through the post before they can find a link for it. Make sure you link out to other websites and to other pages on your website. Lots of interlinking is good practice for SEO and also creates a better experience for your audience. In comparison posts we love to include include a simple comparison table that can summarize everything that we talk about. Next, we need to talk about optimization. So there are a few little tricks we can use to optimize certain parts of our website to make it perform better. We won't go super deep into the technicals in this video, but there are some quick wins we've noticed that make a big difference. Firstly, is to compress your images. This can be any image you include on your site. For your server to load a 2.5 megabyte image will take considerably longer than a 25 kilobyte image. Compression of that much is a lot, but it is possible. We'd highly recommend using something like TinyPNG to quickly and easily compress any image on your website. We have previously used WordPress image compression plugins, but we haven't had a great experience with them and felt like it was another unnecessary plugin 
plugin that weighed the site down. If they work for you, then great, but we do it ourselves before we even upload it to WordPress, and that for us has worked well. Another type of optimization is where to place the links. A well-placed affiliate link is hugely important. We tend to use text links, which has worked really well. We had a huge click-through rate numbers that we never really expected when we used exclusively text links. One trend that we see a lot with affiliate sites is to stick a huge buy now button all over the post. We're not a fan of this anymore because we think people are getting wise to it. If your post has multiple huge buy now buttons everywhere, it's going to feel like the user is being sold to. And usually people don't like being sold to. If it has a small text link that simply says, check the latest price, it feels like the user is choosing to click through through at their own free will. And we put this at the start and end of every post. But we encourage you to try and experiment on your own. Find out what works, what doesn't. Use the stats spreadsheet that we've mentioned before to help you with this. And that's about it for the content section. So in summary, the main posts to remember are, long high quality posts tend to work for the best, but try not to add content for the sake of content. It needs to be high quality and actually solve the user's problem. Make sure the content is optimized well and includes lots of photos, videos, and interesting tables and graphics to keep your user's attention. And that's about it. The actual words on the pages are down to you, but that's something I'm sure you can figure out if you've got this far. Chapter 8 Promotion and Marketing. In this chapter, we'll look at how we like to promote our site. This will be in two sections. The first will be SEO based promotions, and the second, you guessed it, is a non SEO based promotion. The vast majority of your viewers will come from Google as that's the model we're building our entire site around. You create high quality focused content around very specific keywords and then Google will place your content into the search results, hopefully on the first page. And this will bring people to your site organically. A lot of the work here is already done. You've got your keywords and you've built an optimized site and content. That should be enough, but there are things you can do to help that along, namely, building backlinks. Backlinks are links from other websites to your site. These are a big indicator for Google to show the legitimacy and authority of your site. If you have loads of big trusted websites linking to the content you've made, and then Google can be fairly confident that your site is also to be trusted and they will likely boost it in the search results. So how do we get other websites to link to our site? Well, we have a couple of techniques that we like to use and we'll share that with you. Now, the skyscraper technique. This was popularized by Brian Dean of Backlinko. This method revolves around finding a post that is popular and then making a post that is considerably better than the original and then promote it to all the people that are linking it to the popular post. So for example, if one of your competitors has a 3000 word long post comparing best electric chainsaws with lots of backlinks to that page, you would come along and make a better piece of content and then reach out to the sites that link to your competitor and tell them that your piece is better. Hopefully they'll update their links to point to your site instead. A few ways to make your post better is to add more detail or more comparables. Or one way that has become very popular is to create graphics and specific infographics that summarize the content on that page. You can do this yourself if you know how or are willing to learn, or you could find someone on Fiverr or Upwork or other similar freelancing sites. The next technique is probably our favourite, emailing the companies whose items we have reviewed. This is by far the most success we've had from Batlinkin and it is super simple. If you find any products that are in your niche that are manufactured by small companies, then make sure to feature these products on your site. Review them specifically or add them to one of your lists if they're good enough. You can then email the company saying you have reviewed their product saying it's great and you love it. Then let the company know that they can do whatever they like with the post, but that you just wanted to reach out personally and let them know how much you have enjoyed their product. Not only have we got numerous battlings from doing this, but we have also established really strong relationships with owners of businesses in our niche. And this can be so valuable later on, especially if you're looking to scale. And soon we'll mention another method of promotion that can work after you've established a good relationship with smaller companies. The next technique to get backlinks is to pay for them. Google does look down on you paying directly for someone to place a link to your site from their site, but you can always hire freelancers to do the hard work of reaching out for you. The downside to this is that you do want people who know what they are doing. It can get expensive. 
Have a look on Fiverr and Upwork for examples of this. But be careful before you commit as a lot of them, a lot of them will simply place links on random websites that accept user submission. Proceed with caution. So that's it for link building. It is hard work and can sometimes require hours of work with no reward. But using the techniques we've mentioned, you should have a step up on the competition. Now onto other ways of general promotion. One of the greatest successes we've had in our entire affiliate marketing history is running a very successful giveaway. This developed from creating those relationships with the smaller companies that we mentioned earlier. What happened was this. We asked two companies that we had previously spoken to if they wanted to sponsor a giveaway that we planned for in the near future. And they both agreed. We ended up choosing to work with the first company that replied and said to the other that we will work with them in the near future. Now, we had a giveaway prize provided for free. We then found a website that hosts giveaways and posted the giveaway. This included a bio about a website with backlinks to a network of bloggers who all posted the bio on their websites. Ultimately, it resulted in a giveaway that was entered in over a hundred thousand times and massively boosted our site. The benefits of this was huge for everyone. We greatly improved our relationship with the company that provided the product. The owner got exposure and backlinks in exchange for one product. We paid just shy of $200 for a service provided by an inventive blogger who skillfully leveraged their position to create another revenue source from basically nothing. We got followers, backlinks and more without having to go through the arduous process of email outreach and other mind-numbing backlinking tasks and someone got one of the best products in their niche for free. This is a great example of everybody winning and we'd highly recommend giving this a go yourself when you're starting to generate a bit of traction for your site. Even better if you can do this just before the holiday season. November and December are always better months. The blogger who hosted our giveaway was part of the niche we were targeting so we're not going to share that today. But with a little digging, it's not difficult to find bloggers out there that host giveaways. The final method is pretty basic, but very effective. Social media. If you're able to create content around the products in your niche, or you can offer some knowledge around your niche, then social media is a great way to bring in more viewers. The obvious talents will be the likes of Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and even Pinterest. What we really like about Pinterest is the content has a long shelf life. A lot of content posted on Instagram will become irrelevant the day after it is posted, but we're still getting hundreds of thousands of views from content we posted years ago. If you've got some nice graphics or an infographic, that you made in your attempt at the skyscraper technique, then Pinterest is a perfect place to post that. One of our infographics went semi-viral on Pinterest and brings in about 5-10% to 10 of our traffic. Not only is social media a great way to diversify your traffic, but it can also be an asset in itself. If you ever want to sell your website, having a strong social media following that you can include in the sale will be a huge bonus and could greatly increase the monthly multiplier that the website marketplaces use to value your website. Chapter 9, Outro. This is it, we're done. So that's it, if you made it this far, firstly, well done. That has been a lot to take in. The next step is to actually start. It's all well and good to watch this video a few times, but at the end of the day, it's down to you to put this new knowledge to use. We'll always be here to lend a helping hand if you need it, but the important thing is to start. So feel free to ask questions in the comments or reach out to us on social media or email. We're also trying to expand the Little Bridging community to build up for budding entrepreneurs to learn and network. So if you're looking to join a community of active entrepreneurs that share what's working for them, then make sure you join us using the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and we wish you the very best of luck on your affiliate marketing adventure. All the best, until next time. Shh. <laughs>